This is a fast-paced presentation of how to create a new module in the modular architecture in Habitat and should serve uh, as an example of how easy it is to extend the website with new features and functionality. The module we'll be creating is a frequently asked questions module where editor can maintain a list of questions and answers in Sitecore and show them on a page in the website. The uh, business requirements for the module in this initial version is quite simple, but the feature can be extended in future versions. Technically, we'll be creating the module in an isolated Visual Studio solution to highlight the modularity of the architecture. But you can also follow the same steps to create the new feature module in the existing Habitat solution. We will go through the process relatively quickly. So if you want to follow the steps in Visual Studio, it's probably a good idea to continuously pause the video as it plays. First thing we do is actually create the content items or content templates um, inside um, Habitat. So we'll create a content type called an FAQ for the actual questions and answers. Go ahead and select a proper icon for it just to make sure that it um, Shows up nicely. We'll actually rename it to FAQ item since we will create a, um, a page type called an FAQ so that um, this will be the page that displays a list of all the, um, the questions and answers. We'll call this page type the FAQ um, and we'll select a nice icon for that as well. Uh, as you can see, it um, it actually derives from the um, from the article uh, base templates as well, so it does have titles and, and content of those kind of things. It's navigable. Um, we will go to the section and select the um, the FAQ as a insert option for this, so that we can add it to our our um, site immediately. And then we'll go up to our site and actually create an FAQ page under the um, modules uh, in, in Habitat. This of course means that once we switch over to the experience editor, we can go over to modules, to features, and our new FAQ item pops up in the right hand corner there. So the next thing we'll do is create a new um, Visual Studio project for our module. We'll create an um, ASP.NET web application module. We will place it in uh, completely isolated from the rest of the, uh, the Habitat uh, solution um, in a Habitat FAQ template. And we'll create a, an empty template with um, the folders and core references for MVC. We'll add unit tests as well. For future. Now we'll go ahead and close that solution and then just go to the file system to make sure that the folder structure there is correct. Um, so we will uh, just quickly rename the, um, the folder for the code and the tests so that it fits with the conventions of Habitat. Uh, and move it um, around to make sure that um, everything is set up correctly. Um, like that. Um, we'll of course also bind, re reopen the solution and create um, the proper bindings in, um, in the solution again. <clears throat> so once we've done that, uh, we can start creating the actual code for our, you can see all the scaffolding is created. So let's just change it to uh, .NET for six, so that we're sure that it's running the right.NET version, both the tests and the um, and the code. We will get rid of all the stuff that is not needed by um, by Habitat. Make sure that the web config does not um, publish 
because we do not want to want the local web public web config to override the cycle web config. Now at this point we set up an actual publish action. Um, so we set it up to publish. It's a custom publish target called uh, local. So it'll publish to our local website. And we'll publish to um, the uh, the local host, so the habitat.local, which is the standard um, URL for um, for local habitat. If you've changed it, it will of course be your the the other one, and we'll change it to be the debug one because we want the debug DLLs to go out there. <clears throat> now at this point, we can actually do a publish and see that everything is published to the right URL. Um, now what we want to do is create a new folder for the um, for the app config files. So we'll start setting up the serialization for our um, items. So we'll create a new uh, include folder here under app config. And we'll also add um, a feature folder, which is the convention in Habitat. What we can do is we can go to the existing Habitat and then copy one of the feature modules. Uh, let's say the page content one and the actual serialization settings for that across to our new feature. <clears throat> Just go ahead and rename everything to FAQ, both in the file uh, and the file name itself. Make sure that the dependencies are set up correctly if you're depending on other things. Um, now this won't depend on anything other than serialization. And then of course we need to put a set up the location for the serialization folder. Since we're not actually running inside the um, Habitat solution, but this is a self-contained module, we have to set up the, serializ the serialization target manually. If this was a module inside the, the Habitat solution, that would have been taken care of. Now, if we publish that one file and switch over to Unicorn, we will now see that feature come up in the list of um, modules in Unicorn. Now what we want to do is create the root folders for that feature. So we'll go ahead and create a templates FAQ uh, folder and likewise a, uh, a layouts for our renderings. And at this point we can do uh, an initial serialization of the feature, which will take those two items and put down on disk. We'll, and as we continue to create items, those items will be created on disks under here. Now, at this point, we bind the uh, the solution to our Sitecore solution. So let's go ahead and set and bind it in uh, so that rocks can actually uh, function with it as well. And then we can start creating the actual templates for our um, for our feature. So we do have the page types set up on the Habitat website but we don't have actually any feature specific settings on it. So that's what we want to set up now. Just go to templates to the newly created FAQ one, create a new template. And we'll call this an FAQ item um, <clears throat> template. And we prefix it with an underscore to signify that it's a, it's a data template. And we put in the two fields, which is question and answer. And we'll create the answer as a rich text field, just to make it a little elaborate. Now at this point, let's go and create uh, the templates uh, binding so that we bind the um, um, the 
the IDs for the templates, and we'll create this as a struct um, in our uh, as conventions in Habitat says. So we'll create a templates uh, constants file, and in there we'll have um, another struct called fields. Um, we use the uh, the rocks tools to get the actual. So we call it FAQ items. So we have a, a template called FAQ item. And in there, we have our ID for the template. Uh, <clears throat> and we use rocks to copy the uh, item ID so that we can easily put that in. Likewise, we'll create the two fields under there, um, the question and the answer in another struct called fields. Right, the next part is to then bind the actual FAQ item um, to our newly created data template. So we'll go and add a base template to the FAQ item, called the, F the underscore FAQ item. Um, and then <clears throat> we'll create the standard values. Just quickly go and set up the question to be dollar name. And we'll go and set up the FAQ page, um, assign a, an insert option so that we can create FAQ items under the FAQ page. And now we can go up to our Habitat site uh, and under the modules there, um, the FAQ page, we can then start adding um, FAQ items. Now, this is a very simple example. We might have a bucket in a real life scenario, or um, we might have a global um, folder with all the FAQ and then have taxonomy to, uh, to drill down and filter on different FAQs. But I'll just go ahead and create three items, um, three basic questions about habitat. There we go. And we'll put in the default answer to all of them, which is read the wiki. Now at this point, we'll go and create um, the actual uh, functionality. So we'll go to the um, control, uh, to go and create a controller. So our um, FAQ controller to the FAQ project. Now this will set up the controller here. We'll just go rid of and uh, get rid of some of the default stuff. Change um, the index method to be an FAQ list method. Um, and just change that uh, or create the razor view to go with that. So there you go, all the, um, all the scaffolding is set up for us. We will go ahead and, and remove that and change it to be, um, or we need the Psychor references, of course, um, in order to bind correctly um, to a Psychor, um, to all the Psychor classes. So let's just go and uh, use the lib folder from the Habitat project to add those uh, references. And we'll add the kernel and the MVC one. There we go. Now at this point, we need um, FAQ, uh, an FAQ item. So we'll go ahead and create that. Um, or actually it's FAQ items. So in there, we'll have one property called, um, uh, called items, which is an I enumerable of the items that is the actual FAQ items. <clears throat> so we'll include the Psychor assembly um, or namespace get and setters for that and then go back to the CSHTML change it to FAQ items and we'll change that the controller um, to be a, uh, a sidecore controller so that we'll have access to more 
um, of the Sitecore stuff in there. Um, just add the usings. Now at this point, we'll just go ahead and write some just a bit of code to get the um, the rendering context, so the current rendering context uh, and the item for that. So it's the data source item for the rendering um, and get all the children, but only get the ones that actually derive from the FAQ uh, item data template. So where and the, oh, we need a link reference. So where the item is derived um, and we need that method. That method is in the Sitecore extensions in um, <coughs> in the uh, in um, in Habitat. But we'll use the template, the FAQ items, and we'll go ahead and, and you can see it's missing. So we will just add that reference as well to the project. You might want to uh, make sure your references are better, a bit better um, controlled, but um, for the sake, of the sake of the example, this works. Um, and now, of course, what we might want to do here is actually move this to a proper um, uh, to a proper uh, to to a proper repository. Um, so that we can start using unit, unit testing and all that um, for the controllers and they and just make sure everything works correctly. So we'll just go ahead and add um, a uh, repository here. We'll add it to the models. FAQ items repository. And we will um, create a, uh, the, the items in here. And return FAQ items. Get the call the get create the getter method, and we take a context item in from where we want those items, and we'll copy that line in just to get that in there. We'll just create an interface to make this testable or to, to make sure that we can test the controller. And we'll return the repository um, get method with the current context data item. Now in the FAQ list, we'll go ahead and um, just quickly write some code um, that actually renders it out using just standard bootstrap HTML. It's pretty rudimentary. It um, does a for loop over all the items and then renders um, everything as an accordion um, so that it's, it expands out and we'll use all the proper sidecore um, extension methods to render the field. Now, and then of course we need to go in and, and add that rendering in sidecore. So just go and add uh, control rendering FAQ list. Add the um, just the namespace and the, the namespace and the uh, controller class name, and then the assembly and the controller action, which is um, called FAQ list. Now we'll go and attach that um, rendering to the FAQ page and we'll add it um, at the FAQ list that we've just created and we'll add it just below the page body so that we can have the a title and a and a um, the article content above above it um, we'll change just change the the 
placeholder to be the same as the body content, so it goes under the body. And then, then we can go and have a look at the website and everything should be running just smooth with having the FAQ item. And we now have the FAQ functionality in there. So that sort of concludes this um, very quick overview of, uh, of how to create a, uh, a module and add um, functionality.